How do we balance on two legs? And what can fossils tell us about the balance of ancient animals? Unlike most mammals, we humans are habitually bipedal. Our bones and muscles were designed to allow us to walk on our hind legs efficiently. Crawling about on our hands and knees is tiring and clumsy. But another important part of bipedalism is balance. You won't be on two legs for long if you cannot stay balanced. We detect our orientation in space via the vestibular system, a series of tubes and hollow organs that comprise part of our inner ear. Today, we're going to focus on the semicircular canals. We have three of these hollow tubes, corresponding to the three axes of space, height, width, and length. These tubes contain a jelly-like substance that slides around when we move our head. At the base of these tubes is an organ containing hair cells. The movement of this gelatin pushes the hair cells, and this stress opens ion channels at the base of the hair cells that stimulate the release of a neural signal. This signal travels to the brain and is interpreted as our position in space. So how is our inner ear different from that of an ape? Here is a picture I have comparing a human and a chimpanzee inner ear. Now, your first response might be, isn't that just the same picture? But no, it's not. Our inner ears look remarkably similar, with just a few slight differences. And the feature that I want to discuss today is the thickness of the semicircular canals. So I want you to look at that picture again, and this time, focus on those big loops. If you look carefully, you can see that they are a little bit skinnier in the chimpanzee than they are in the human. Scientists quantify this by measuring the radius, or the distance from the center of the semicircular canal to the edges. And these measurements confirm our estimation. Chimpanzees have skinny anterior and posterior semicircular canals. Those are the ones that stick up. The third canal is called the lateral canal. And in this picture, you can see that it is that bar across the main section of the inner ear. And it's sticking out towards us in this perspective. In chimpanzees, this canal is larger than in humans. So how exactly do these slight differences in the radii of the semicircular canals affect us? Well, experiments suggest that the size of these canals is linked to their sensitivity. Larger semicircular canals are more sensitive to slight stimuli. Smaller canals are less sensitive. If correct, this suggests that our anterior and posterior canals are more sensitive than the chimpanzees, but the chimpanzee's lateral canal is more sensitive than ours. Some scientists believe that the radius of the semicircular canals can tell us something about how an organism walks. Now this all brings us to an extinct genus of apes known as Australopithecines, and these animals are widely contested, mainly because evolutionists argue that they are kind of missing links on the way to becoming human. They are these transitional species that gave rise to the genus Homo, or humans, and creationists disagree with that. So it's very common for creationists to argue that Australopithecines were not actually bipedal. They couldn't stand and walk on their hind legs. And that to them basically means that they cannot have been our ancestors. However, there's very good evidence from the skeleton that Australopithecines could walk on their hind legs very similar to us. So this has been a subject of interest, particularly when we're dealing with fossil animals whose locomotor mode is controversial and that's basically because for animals like the australopithecines so take for example the famous fossil lucy there's disagreement about how exactly she walked some people think she walked on two legs other people think she walked on four so what exactly can the inner ear tell us about how australopithecines like her walk so comparisons of the inner ear of these Australopithecines to the inner ears of humans and chimpanzees usually tend to show that Australopithecines had an inner ear more similar to that of chimps than that of humans. Whereas Homo erectus, one of the different human species in the fossil record, has an inner ear more similar to us than it is to chimpanzees. So what does that actually tell us? Does that mean that the Australopithecines could not have walked upright? Well, I don't think so, and the scientists who study the inner ear don't think so either. 
Here is a stress graph comparing the inner ear of humans and chimpanzees to two australopithecine specimens. The first thing that you should notice is that their anterior and posterior semicircular canals are actually a little bit larger than that of the chimp. However, measurements show that they are still closer in size to the chimpanzees than they are to humans. Now some people have misinterpreted this to mean that australopithecines couldn't walk upright. However, there is little evidence to suggest that this feature would have prevented them from staying balanced while on two legs. The most charitable interpretation of this data is that australopithecines were somewhat less sensitive to changes in head carriage than we are. Hypothetically, this means that they would not have been as good at running and jumping. However, they still would have been perfectly capable of walking upright. Other scientists dispute this claim though. They argue that there is no clear correlation between the radius of the semicircular canals and locomotor methods. It turns out that the size of these canals is influenced by other factors, including body size and brain size. Check out this figure plotting the radius of the semicircular canal against body size for over 200 mammals. What you'll notice is that most of the dots cluster together, forming a diagonal line toward the upper right. This indicates that as an animal's body size increases, the size of its semicircular canals do too. Larger animals have larger canals. Now notice the coloration of the dots. Red triangles indicate fast, agile mammals. White squares are mammals with medium agility, and blue circles represent slow, less agile mammals. All of these groups overlap in the graph, and this indicates that the radius of the semicircular canal is not a great predictor of agility. Another analysis of this data set found that the radius of the semicircular canals was at best a very imprecise predictor of an animal's agility. And predictions based on this method consistently gave lower estimates of agility than other methods did. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that we really shouldn't put too much stock in the slight differences of thickness in the semicircular canals of australopithecines. These variations may not even be related to differences in the way they walked at all. And even if they are, they would not have precluded the australopithecines from walking upright. Thanks so much for watching. If you had any thoughts about the video, make sure to drop them down in the comments section below. Thanks.